Hi, Shreya. I'm going to take a look at your portfolio for college admission. I will talk about your entire portfolio overall, give you some general strategies and approaches you can use, and then I'll go through and I'll critique each piece individually. I'm very excited about your portfolio because I think you have an excellent range a variety in terms of media, subject, and also stylistically. And I think it's rare that I see a portfolio that is that diverse in all three areas. I think that's wonderful. It really shows to me how willing you are to experiment and try out all different kinds of ways of working. That's really wonderful and comes across really well. The other thing that I noticed too about your subject matter is that in addition to having more traditional pieces, for example, like the figure paintings, some of the still life pieces. It also seems like you have a lot of pieces that do dig into more personal narratives, for example, images number one, number five, and then there's clearly a lot of imagination and invention in terms of some of these interior design pieces as well. So there's a wonderful liveliness in all of your work in terms of your thinking, in terms of how you're developing all these concepts. That's something I don't see all the time in a lot of portfolio, so I think that's great. I think where you can improve is the consistency of quality in your portfolio because you have a couple pieces that I think are really outstanding. For example, image number one, I think really jumps out. That's a piece that I think seems like it was heavily manipulated. It seems like it went through a number of different stages to get to the point that it got to. You have this egg beater project, which I think really shows wonderful compositional ways of working and also an engagement with the media. However, you also have a couple pieces that I think by comparison are relatively weak. For example, I would say image number three, image number eight, image number two. Those three pieces to me don't really sort of live up to the quality of your other pieces. And so I think what I'd like to see is for you to get all of the pieces in your portfolio to the same caliber of quality because it's almost like more disappointing when you see a couple of great pieces and then you see a lot that are mediocre because it signifies that you're capable of doing high quality work but that you're not doing it all the time. So that consistency is really critical. Your technique in terms of painting is also quite inconsistent. You have a couple of paintings that I think are very lively, really engaging, like image number nine. I really see you engaging with material, playing with texture. I think the figure paintings that you have are quite accomplished. You have really assertive, very bold brushwork. But then you have a couple of paintings that, again, don't really measure up to that same level of quality. For example, I'd say image number six is a very plain portrait. The colors aren't particularly engaging and there isn't a very good sense of bone structure in the face. So I would say your paintings also you want to bring to that same level of quality that's apparent in some of the pieces. I also think color is definitely an area that you need to really take a strong initiative to work on. You definitely have color in your portfolio, however, the majority of the time, the way you're using the color is in a very isolated way. For example, image number three, which has the nose, you have very plain, very graphic shapes where all the colors are very flat. Image number seven, which is a still life, has a lot of colors, but the colors are very isolated. For example, the red area is red, the green area is green. And so I think the issue is that a lot of your colors are too separate from each other. You have to find a way to get a little bit of green into the red, a little bit of red into the white. So I want to see the colors mingle a lot more. And I also think you can work a lot harder to mix the colors. That's something that I think a lot of students don't do enough. They tend to use the colors out of the tube and they add a little bit of white and maybe a little bit of black and it ends up looking really plain. So I would say definitely work on that because that's an issue also in image number two and also image number eight. So I would definitely work on your color a lot more. Your portraits, I would say, are quite good and they're very expressive, in particular number one. However, especially in image number five and image number six, I get the feeling that there's too much emphasis 
on the facial features and not enough emphasis on the bony structure and the musculature that surrounds those facial features. That's very common that people get really fixated on the facial features and they're not thinking about the skeletal structure that's underneath, which is actually more critical. So I would really encourage you when you're looking at these portraits that you look for bony landmarks such as the cheekbones, the jaw bones, the eye sockets, all of those skeletal structures need to be emphasized a lot more dramatically throughout all of your pieces. You have a lot of 3D work, which is phenomenal. You've got the cardboard piece, even the egg beater piece is like an accordion book format. You have the interior space pieces and also the apparel piece as well. So not only do you have a lot of 3D work, which a lot of students don't have, but you have a lot of range within the 3D work. However, the photographs I think that you have are not doing those pieces justice. For example, image number four, the sculpture is quite clear, but it really looks like it's floating in space. And I think it's really good in a 3D piece if you can get very soft lighting and get soft shadows that really show the weight of the sculpture or at least its context within a space. Um, the apparel piece, I feel the two photos that you have pretty much say the same thing. I'm not learning something new about that piece. And so there are ways that you can shoot the photograph to show more variety and dimension in the piece. I feel like image number 15, the lighting is very dark and almost too dramatic and it's making it really hard for me to see the entire piece overall. Number 16, I think it's the arrangement of the slide. I don't think it's a good idea to have black as a background. In your photographs of 3D work, I think the black has a tendency to make things look very flat. I think it's better to have like a nice white backdrop out of paper and then get again soft lighting and shoot the 3D piece so you can see the actual context of the piece with shadows. So I think that would be very helpful for you to do. Okay, let's go through and talk about each piece individually. I think this piece is probably one of your strongest pieces in the portfolio because it really shows, I think, a very strong sense of form. I really feel like the nose in the upper left-hand corner is very palpable. I really feel like there's so much distortion and engagement with the material, the ripping of the paper, and there's a lot of tension in this piece. I feel like especially this hand, which is grabbing the eye in the upper right-hand corner, it's like you can feel the elasticity of the skin being pulled, also in the lower left-hand corner as well. So so those areas I think are really exciting. Also the sprinkling of white that's all around the piece I think also is a contributing factor in that it really pulls together the entire composition. In fact, I might say that you could have more of the white sprinkling, but maybe put it on so that it engages more with the faces, or maybe you even have black sprinkles that start to go over the whites of the faces. So you could do that as well. I think this piece needs just a quick pass of detail work. For example, I think it's a little awkward that you didn't really take the time to articulate the teeth, in particular the mouth that's right in the middle it's a little strange because it's like you started to hint at the teeth, but then you sort of chickened out and decided not to do it. And then the teeth in the middle upper left corner, they don't get articulated at all. And then it's also strange that the fingers in the lower left hand corner and also in the upper right don't have any fingernails. And so it's strange because I think sometimes people remove parts of a piece because they want to de-emphasize it, but actually what that does is it calls more attention to that area because we say, where are the fingernails? Where is the teeth? And so I think that's definitely something to work on. I also think it'd be nice if we could get a little bit of texture in the tongues, like just a little bit of surface so we can really get a sense of maybe the taste buds that are on the tongue or maybe if the tongue could be a slightly darker color you may want to make that differentiation because for a lot of people the skin tone and the uh, tone of the lip is very very different and also on the tongue as well but this is a powerful piece I think that the composition's really strong and I really feel like it's a complete piece like I even though there are things that I'm suggesting I really feel like you pushed all the way through with this piece which is great. 
Okay, so this acrylic piece on canvas, um, I think this is one of your weaker pieces, both in terms of color and in terms of composition. What I'm seeing in this piece is the composition's extremely reliant on horizontal and vertical lines. And the issue with horizontal and vertical lines is they tend to make a composition very static looking. One way you can combat that is if you can find diagonals to emphasize. I mean, you have a few diagonals on the left, but they're very minimal. And I don't think that they're contributing enough to make a difference. For example, in the image on the right, the very tall vertical white line I think is really distracting. It almost looks like it's not painted at all. And while I sort of like the atmosphere of the one on the right, the, the general mood of it, I think is pretty interesting. I don't feel like I really understand the spaces or what they have to do with each other. Between the two paintings, I like the one on the right better because the one on the right, I think color-wise is more consistent, more complete, because even though the background is green and the floor is blue and the side is gray, those colors all seem to be related to each other. And I also actually really like the brushwork that's on the couch on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, the colors don't make a lot of sense to me and the foliage seems to come out of nowhere. Like I'm not sure if the foliage is in the room or if it's being seen through a glass window. And also the orange seems to come out of nowhere as well. And so I guess just spatially, I'm very confused on the left-hand side. The other issue is that the blue couch on the left-hand side, it looks like it's floating. Like I don't get a sense that it actually has gravity and volume. Whereas the couch on the right-hand side, that really looks like it's seated within the space. So. I guess I just feel like the image on the left hand side, there's too many problems in terms of the spatial depth and also just the colors are not really saying very much to me right now. They just seem a little bit arbitrary. Now the figure on the right hand side, I think is pretty interesting in that it's starting to hint at some type of narrative, but I find that it's just really confusing. I don't know if that's flames that coming out of her hair and she looks like she's holding something, almost looks like a paintbrush and a bucket that's on the right hand side. But I guess I want the figure either to be much more specific are much less specific. It's almost like this awkward point where it's giving me some information, but not enough that I can really sink my teeth into it. On the other hand, it's not ambiguous enough for it to be a mysterious area that I'm very curious about. And so I would say there's a lot of issues with both sides of this piece. I think if you can, I would replace it in your portfolio. Okay, this is also, I think, one of the weaker pieces in the portfolio. I think it's a little bit confusing, again, what's happening spatially, because the issue is that your background is very flat and graphic. It reads more like a pattern than it does a space. But I think the issue is that the stylistic choice you've made on the legs and on the nose is very modeled. Like for example, on the legs, you really are going in and showing shadow and form. And also on the nose as well, it seems like there's a real effort to really show the shadows and the form. But then that doesn't really line up with the background, which is so flat and graphic. I don't think necessarily that you can't have two contrasting styles in the same piece. But I think for me in this case, they really clash because they feel like they have nothing to do with each other. The other concern is that color wise, the background is super bright, saturated colors, really high contrast. And then the nose and the legs are very gray, very muddy colors. And it's a little strange the way the ribbons are done with the feet because on the left-hand side, the ribbons are outlined in black. On the right-hand side, they're outlined in white. And so I don't really understand what was the decision behind that. I think that's a little bit random. So I think this piece, not only are you having conflicting stylistic and color choices, but also the composition's pretty predictable. You have the objects straight in the middle of the page. You have all these diagonals that are all pointing towards the middle of the page. So essentially in terms of composition, you're not giving me a very compelling reason to want to travel into the corners of this piece. The only part of this piece that I really feel compelled to go to is the middle because everything is pointing that way. And I wish that I could circulate around the composition a lot more dramatically.
Okay, I really like that you have this 3D piece and it seems to me like the construction of it was quite good. I'm guessing you probably used hot glue or some adhesive like that. And so I really enjoy the fact that the tower on the right hand side seems like you invested a lot of time into the cutting. And so there's a real consideration of craftsmanship in this piece. My only concern is I feel like this piece is three separate fragments that were thrown together. For example, I see the tower on the right, I see the curvaceous forms on the left, and then this roof-like object at the top, and then there's like this random little staircase that comes through the middle. And I think on their own, each of these fragments could be very interesting, but I don't see a lot of transition between the objects to get them to bridge the gap between each other. I also think this square base that you have the tower on seems really random. It seems like it was just thrown in there just for functionality so that the tower could stand up. And you wanna make sure when you build something three-dimensionally that you're adding things there for support, for physical support, but also in terms of design. Like sometimes I see pieces where people just stick a piece of cardboard because it's falling down and then it's so obvious that that wasn't part of the design. So anything that's structurally there, you need to incorporate into the design a little bit better. I guess I wish that there was just more engagement between the three fragments because I feel like the curvaceous forms, if you could make more of them and maybe have the curvaceous forms climb up the tower so they were almost eating the tower like um like ivy or something that's crawling up the side of the building or maybe you have the geometric shapes like falling down and maybe penetrating the space around the curvaceous forms i think that the issue is just that the three parts feel like they have nothing to do with each other they look like they're just stuck there so i would really consider that this is a piece that you absolutely can work on more because when i look at portfolios I will say, okay, this piece, just get rid of it. But there are other pieces where you spend like another two or three hours and you really could improve it quite a bit. So this would be one of those pieces. I feel like this little bridge in the middle, it's really out of place. I would get rid of it, add more of the curvaceous forms. And I also think it's important for a 3D piece like this that you definitely add another point of view. You definitely want to have a minimum of two views so we can really get a sense of the piece because I feel looking at just this one view, it's very limiting. It's really hard for me to figure out exactly what's going on. All right, I really enjoy this triptych. I think that there's a lot of stylistic changes between the three images, which I think is very exciting. One thing that I'm noticing right away though is there's a really obvious color change between the white of the acrylic paint and the white of the charcoal charcoal. So the charcoal, I'm guessing you're erasing to get that white, but if you look at it closely, you'll notice that the acrylic paint is more blue and that the white in the charcoal is more warm. And so I find that that conflicts quite a bit, especially because the image on the right has no white acrylic at all. And I think that if you were to put maybe a very, very thin, subtle amount of white acrylic paint into the right image that would make this piece come together more as a triptych because i really noticed that stylistic difference or i think another thing you could do is perhaps at this point now that the acrylic paint has dried layer some charcoal over the acrylic paint and put a little bit more acrylic paint into the charcoal because i feel like your treatment of the acrylic paint and the charcoal they're really separate and i think that if you can get them to mix more that would be better because i see that a lot with mixed media pieces where people will use two different media but they're they're almost like they don't want to touch each other and so you want to let them blend together a lot lot more but i really enjoy the brushwork especially the one on the left hand side i think in the middle one you probably could get a much smaller brush because i feel like i want to see more of those acrylic painting strokes i feel like there's not really enough right now and then the other thing i would say is you really got to work on composition in your portraits because I don't think it's a great idea that all three faces are right in the middle. I mean, they do have differences in terms of the acrylic paint strokes, but when it comes down to composition, all three of these are pretty much exactly the same. Like for example, what would it look like if the image on the right 
What if the head was in the upper right hand corner? What if it was in the lower left hand corner? There's got to be more ways you can just push the composition around and make it a lot less predictable than it is now. This I think is one of your weaker pieces. I think one of the issues I have with it is it doesn't seem like it was worked on enough. It looks like a quick study, but I don't know that I see it as a fully finished piece. I also think that color wise, you're using the most obvious colors for this type of flesh tone. I think that what you really need to look for in terms of flesh tone is how you can get cool colors into the flesh tone because a lot of people look at flesh they say oh in this case it's a peach color with some burnt sienna and a little bit of pinks and a few oranges and yes you may see that however if you look really closely at the form and the face, you're gonna see minor areas of like olive green or maybe little bits of blue or little bits of purple, especially in the shadows. And so I think if you do another self-portrait, I would really recommend that you search harder for those colors because if you don't look for those cool colors, you won't see them. That's just the way it is. And it's hard. At first, you're gonna feel like you don't see them at all, but if you really look hard, you'll find them. An artist you could look at is Lucien Freud, who does amazing figure and portrait paintings. And if you look at his paintings, you will see those cool colors. You will see slaps of blue, little bits of purple in there. So take a look and analyze his paintings. I do think the composition of this piece is better. I like that the face is off center a little bit. It seems very dreamy, but I think the technique is just not up to par with the other pieces. This piece, I think, has a really nice sense of light, especially on the onion in the middle, I think is quite good. Um, I feel, though, that the space is very confusing. The only area where I really understand the space is the dark green shadow on the right-hand side of the onion in the middle. There, I really feel like there's a pocket of space. The red cloth on the left, though, I don't know if it's supposed to be in front of the onion or if it's supposed to be really close to the onion. And same thing, I would say in the upper right hand corner with that orange space, it doesn't push back for me enough. And so I think what I would just do in this piece is try to emphasize more which what things are going backwards and which things you want to come forward. My only indication with the red cloth is that you have the green cloth going behind it. So I'm thinking now that it should be in the front, but at least in the beginning when I looked at it, it was very unclear. You have these white, I guess, roses on the right hand side. And I wish that I saw more of those. I wish they interacted with the space more. I feel like you could definitely have more objects. Like I just noticed the banana. It took me a while to see that. But for example, I think in the upper left you could have an object, maybe in front of the orange, a uh, cloth in the background. It just seems like the cloth is so dominant in this piece that the objects are almost being swallowed. So I think I would rethink your setup for this particular still life. This is, I think, one of your weaker pieces in the portfolio, largely because I think the image is very cliche. I feel like this is very common to see an image like this sort of melodramatic image with a hand. The one part I do like about it is I do like the cloth and the top part of the piece going into the left. I think there's some beautiful washes. That area really looks mixed to me. It looks like it's heavily layered. So you've got some gorgeous pinks and blues going on. But the issue is that the hand and the light coming down and all the blue in the background, I think gets really boring really fast. And so this is a piece that I think I'd take out of your portfolio. For me, they're just, isn't enough substance to the, this piece to really warrant sticking it around in your portfolio. This piece I'm very excited about because I think that it really shows an engagement with the paint that is so different than your other pieces. Your other pieces are very painterly and you do show your strokes, but here it seems like you're really making an effort to um, really layer the paint quite a bit. In fact, you might try golden acrylics. They make a lot of gel mediums and additives and you can get things like pumice mixture or like clear granular gel and you can make amazing three-dimensional surfaces. So that's something you might want to do. I don't think it's a good idea to have the close-up slide on the right though because if you had a full slide 
of the entire piece, we would be able to see probably that amount of texture. It's just now you're shrinking the image so small that it makes it hard for us to see. And then the last thing I would say is I wish the piece had more variety. I sort of feel like if I see one part of the painting, I've seen the rest of it. It would be nice if one part for example, let's just say the lower right hand corner, maybe the part that's closest to us is really, really thick paint. And maybe when you go back into the distance is a lot thinner. So I just would spread it out a little bit more so it's not too monotonous. I like seeing the spread of sketchbooks. Um, I would say though, I don't think I would do four spreads. I think I might make two pages instead. The two pages that I think are the most engaging, I like the one in the lower left, just because it seems like you're really playing around, you're doing a lot of different things in terms of the ideas. And I sort of like the upper left as well, just because of the variety. I don't tend to like the feet in the upper right or the hands and the mouths in the lower right, just because those just seem like exercises to me. There doesn't seem to be as much engagement with brainstorming and thinking, whereas the two pieces on the left do show me that a lot more. So I would encourage you to use the two sketchbook pages on the left-hand side. All right, these two figure paintings, I think pretty clear they were done in a class session. Between the two, I like the one on the right a lot better. So I would recommend that you remove the one on the left so we can really focus on the image on the right. Sometimes when people try to squeeze together two, three or four images, it actually takes away from the piece. But I think this piece is really great, especially the volume in the torso on the right is just really strong, really palpable, and it seems like you're really bold and very confident with your brushwork. So I think this is a really good uh, piece to employ. I wish you'd spend a little bit more time on the stool that the figure's sitting on on the right hand side because it seems like so much attention was paid to the body and yet the actual object he's sitting on seems like it's floating. So next time you're in a class, make sure you're spending at least a little bit more time initially on the subject and also the surface that they're sitting on. Okay, this apparel piece I like for variety, but I don't think it's your best piece. I guess I like that it's using different materials like pipe cleaners, but there isn't a lot of innovation going on with the pipe cleaners. Like they're basically just going horizontally. And so I don't see a huge amount of manipulation with the form or the material. I also think the skirt on the bottom looks poorly made. It just seems like technically speaking, it's not very well assembled. So if you were to use this piece, I think I wouldn't include the skirt and just focus on the top, and I think that would be fine. Now, the photos, I think, are really confusing and really distracting. For example, on the left-hand side, I keep looking at the face, I keep looking at the white sneakers. I think that those are super um, distracting. If you're gonna do a full figure, remove the head, remove the legs, anything that's not critical to the apparel piece, take it out. The image on the right is much better. The only thing is you have the hair obscuring part of the apparel piece, so I definitely take that out. And also, I think that the brown background is not a good idea because it blends in too much with her skin tone. So if you had, for example, a white background or a gray background, that's probably a better choice. I really like this piece. I think it definitely shows invention on your part. However, I don't think it's a good idea to have three images. I feel like the top image is less revealing about what kind of project it is. I like the image on the lower right because that really shows me very clearly the individual images, but also it reveals the format of the piece, which is an accordion book. And so I like that a lot. The top image just looks really flat. And I wish, again, that there wasn't a black background. I wish that you had a little sheet, of a large sheet rather, of white paper, put the accordion book there, got some soft lining and shot it so we could see the context. It just looks much flatter than necessary when you put it against this black background. All right, this plastic piece, I would say, it's off to a good start, but my issue right now is that the image on the left and in the middle look far too similar to each other. It seems like there's a progression. So it seems like the first image on the left, and then we progress to the middle, then we progress to the right. The right image is where I think you're starting to put things together. However, you need to be much, much more dramatic. For example, 
I wish that the piece on the left had so much plastic on it that we couldn't even see the face, that everything was just so totally obscured. And I wish the one in the middle was maybe more like the one on the right because the two on the left, the middle and the left, they look so similar to each other. Also, why can't you use the plastic wrap so it almost becomes more sculptural? Maybe you bunch it up. Maybe instead of just pulling it around, it becomes more 3D. Maybe some of it's hanging off the sides. I think you have to treat this more like a sculpture and a lot less like a flat 2D media piece because the plastic wrap is such a great opportunity. I also don't think it's a good idea to uh, keep the tube in there in the upper right-hand corner. That seems like... I don't know, it's not helping very much. We know it's made out of plastic and I don't think that it's contributing to the piece very much. I also think the color is a little bit harsh in the face. So I'm wondering maybe if you took some India ink or maybe even acrylic paint and painted some light washes over that, I just feel like the color is a little bit too severe and it's too cheerful. I feel like this piece is about being suffocated, as you say in your statement and also in your title. I just feel like it's not really showing that so well. So you have to really be extreme in terms of your use of the material. This piece I like as a mixed media piece. However, the photograph is confusing confusing me. I feel like the photograph on the right is much better, but my issue with the photograph on the left is that these curtains look very sloppily made, and so I'm not really sure how this works as an object, whether it's a diorama. It's just very unclear, so I think this piece needs to have much better photographs shot, and I don't like the clouds. I feel like the clouds they, they look like the most obvious way to make clouds. Like, could you get another material, like, for example, laundry lint or, or something else that's not so obvious, I think would be better. I do like the engagement of the material in the ocean and the paint that you're doing, but the clouds, I think, are a problem. So I would take those out and try to come up with something more different. This piece also, the photographs are very confusing. I don't think that the bird's eye view is a great idea because everything's severely distorted. I think you'd be better off almost bird's eye view, but tilting just a little bit downwards and then maybe one detail. The detail in the upper left, I find really confusing. Like I have no idea what's happening. The detail in the lower left, much easier to read. I feel like in that image, I can really see the space better. But again, because it's against this black flat background, it's very hard for me to really understand the scale of this piece. There's no real lighting to show me what's happening. And so it's hard for me to judge this piece because I feel like the photo is misrepresenting it. And so this is a really important piece for you to rephotograph. This I don't think is one of your strongest pieces. I think that it's very hard to work with only black and white paint. And I feel like the contrast is not very high. It's a very gray painting. Again, the, the lack of articulation in the teeth is very awkward. Like I don't really understand the purpose behind that. And it's confusing because at first I thought that the books at the top, I thought that was part of her hair. And then I looked at it again, I realized, oh, they're books actually. So I think if you want those books to be more clear, you need to show the rigidity of the stiffness of the cover of the book that's underneath the pages, because it seems like you put all your emphasis on the pages that are being flipped in the air, that you really ignored the hardcover part of the book. I mean, I suppose maybe these are paperbacks, but in that case, you still would see the cover of the book. And also it seems like you put so much time into articulating the eyes and then the books seem like they were glossed over, that you didn't spend as much time on them. So for me, there's too many inconsistencies in this painting to warrant putting it in your portfolio. It's also, again, very dead center, straight on composition. The books help a little bit, but I also think this would be a better piece if maybe some of the books were overlapping in front of the figure. Like what would happen if one of the books was covering the eye or one of the books was covering the mouth? It seems like then it would be more 3D. It's a little weird that the face is right there and the books are only behind her. It seems like if she was in this almost hurricane of books, that the books would be so much more chaotic. You also could have different sizes of books, maybe some books that are tiny, some that are much larger. It's a little strange that they're all conveniently exactly the same size. So I think a lot more variety would be a lot better. 
So you have a lot going for you in that I think that you're off to a great start, but I think it is gonna take some revisions, it's gonna take some pieces that are replaced, but I think that you're in pretty good shape, um, but I do think that there's a couple things you need to consider, especially color. I might recommend that you do some of the crayon drawing tutorials that are on artprof.org because that really shows you how to blend and mix the colors a lot more thoroughly, and it's not painting, so it's just drawing with crayons it's a little bit more straightforward but um nice work I, I love seeing the experimentation and the range of styles so definitely keep going with that